All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mihai from PetsCentips.com. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, welcome to this presentation. I assume uh, you guys hear me well. We have video. Everything okay? Hi there, Bogi. Long time no see. All right, the hype has sounded well. We can get started. All right. Guys, today uh, we're not going over the usual uh, routine, the usual analysis session on the GBP pairs. Um, at your request, um, I prepared this presentation on the rainbow. It's a template that I'm using for trading. And I'll try to show you a few things about how I use it. First of all, I have to say this is not my template. Uh, on the other hand, I um, uploaded this template um, on my website, so you will notice the, um, the link uh, at the bottom of the presentation. You just uh, type in that uh, address and uh, you can download it there for free. All right, let's get started then. My uh, plan is to go over this uh, brief presentation that I uh, prepared for you guys. And I'll try to explain each point uh, one by one, but then I just want to have at least half an hour time to look over um, real setups in the market, try to identify these setups. Uh, we'll be doing this in the second part of the presentation after the break um, with more um, time. So first of all, what is this uh, rainbow that I kept talking about? Well, it's basically... Um, template, an MP4 template. Uh, I suppose you can uh, design your own rainbow on any sort of platform. Um, it's just plotting moving averages from uh, very fast ones um, down to 200. So that, uh, that makes a lot of moving averages uh, at the same time on your screen. And what is the, the objective? Um, the first time I came across this um, template, I was in a period when I was looking for the perfect moving averages crossover as I assume many of you uh, have at some point. So you're looking for uh, the crossovers that give you the best signals, the best moving averages, the moving averages. And well, after testing a lot of uh, combinations, a lot of settings, a lot of money management um, uh, settings as well, I was just trying to reach this um, objective rule, objective set of rules to use all the time and just uh, practically um, mechanize my uh, my trading, make it 100% um, a mechanical based on um, on the rules, technical rules for uh, entry and exit and uh, the money management. Well, I did manage to keep, let's say, to keep a float for those uh, trades and uh, depending on the period, depending on the market condition, makes very nice profit in some um, some moments, where, especially when the market is, is uh, trending. But of course, you uh, you all know that the moving averages crossover uh, systems perform really poorly when you are trading inside uh, a range. So I was thinking, well. Um, which are the moving averages, the perfect MAs that never get fooled by those sideways price action uh, periods? Well, my uh, conclusion after, as I said, trying a lot of, of settings, a lot of moving averages was there is no such thing as a perfect combination of moving averages. But there is, if you are actually used to one or two or three moving averages and you you have the habit of um, taking your trades all the time on the same rules or on the same uh, principles, then those moving averages become good for you. But I was just looking for something that will give me perspective. Well, the rainbow is doing exactly that because all the moving averages from practically the two or three moving average, I'm not sure which is the first one. Um, yes, Bobby, the, the, the webinar is recorded. All, all the way up to 200 are on your chart all the time. So you are seeing all the MAs that all the traders using moving averages um, are seeing. All right, so now you have all the information there. Everything is on your screen. Uh, it all comes down to how you're going to use that information in your favor. 
all right now it's not a strategy it's, it's just a template uh, and the way i'm using it is a strategy um well i, I don't want to take any credit for it it's just um a, a basic set of rules that i'm using and it's it's important to note that i'm not taking the trades based purely on these uh, setups but always uh, back them up with um, some analysis first all right now you can use the rainbow to analyze simply to determine where are the levels where the trend will um, likely uh, break or even to use the m8 as support resistance level when you see a uh, concentration of moving averages let's say from 200 down to uh, i don't know maybe 20 uh, at the same level on several time frames that's quite a lot of coincidence happening there and many traders using a wide variety of uh, of moving averages uh, combinations are likely to enter a trade at that point so that's also a good uh, a good reason why you would um, keep an eye on uh, on these uh, ma you, you will see in a moment what i mean when i when, when we look at the actual uh, uh, template all right or you can use it the way i do as a trigger chart all right uh, once I have my analysis done and I know more or less what are the levels I'm interested to buy or sell. Then I go down on a 15 minute and 5 minute chart and I see if there's any combination, any setup uh, according to my rules that can get me into the trade. But basically at that time I'm already, I already know what I want to trade. So it just, as I say, finding an excuse to get into the market with good um, risk reward. And, uh, Template can be downloaded right here. You can see the address here. Just type this in your um, address bar, and um, there is um, an indication there how to download um, your, the template. It's uh, free, of course. All right. Now, this is basically the the whole procedure. Everything is um, right now on the screen. The six uh, steps uh, before pulling the trigger. So there's quite a long way. From the moment uh, I start, let's say, looking at the market until we actually uh, take the trade. One moment, guys. One moment, please. Actually, I'm uh, unable to see uh, right now the private messages. So, um, if there is anything, maybe you can send it to my other uh, nickname. The one uh, ending with uh, one. Uh, Pips and tips one. All right. So first of all, um, you go through the normal analysis. Those of you who um, participated in any of my webinars on Tuesday know what I'm talking about. I'm looking at the bigger chart, weekly, daily, four hour, to get an idea where the market is going, what's the big direction, what's the big trend, uh, what are the levels where I'm expecting the market to give uh, stronger support resistance. So that's, as I call, the map of the market. Inside that map, I'm um, already plotting my trends, my support resistance levels, the, the Fibonacci level. And then I see how I can use the rainbow in my advantage. It's um, not so great if you just use the rainbow directly, because there might be levels that there might be things on the larger time frames that you are not aware of and um, that could interfere with your um, with your trade especially for instance when you're entering um, somewhere let's say in a clearly confirmed trend but you don't actually notice that the trend has been going on for some time and there are some key resistance levels there on the four hour and daily so even though you are very well confirmed and obviously you are trading with the trend uh, that's not the right moment to enter, so that's why that's where the analysis will spare you some uh, losses, some unnecessary losses. Then once I do this, <coughs> sorry, I check the trends on the rainbow, on the bigger chart, just to see what's going on. Sometimes I get nothing out of this uh, check. Um, if uh, four hour, let's say, is just um, uninteresting and it doesn't give me any sort of real indication well i just um go 
on the one hour and 30 minutes. Anything that might be interesting, I just write it down. I just mark the level. All right. Or simply take it into account uh, later on when I try to um, look for the actual trade. Then I look for the 15 minute setup. All right. I'll be going over these steps in a moment um, on um, on the template itself. Okay. As always, uh, it happens. Um, well, it happens very uh, often that, let's say, the dollar pairs are all going in one direction due to uh, dollar weakness or dollar strength. So you will see Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, GU, um, all going in the same direction, and all three pairs give you a signal at approximately the same time. Well, in that case, I I use that a trick to choose one of them because I don't like uh, exposing too much. It's Kind of lose track of your um, money management if you keep entering the, in uh, trades going in the same direction. Uh, it's practically exposing that um, that amount twice or three times instead of having one exposure on one pair. And besides, you're always wondering which one is likely to go um, more in my favor and which one is uh, giving me a, a lower risk. So I'll uh, show you one, well, one po possible way to, to choose your best pairs. I'm using crosses. I'm using, um, in my case, Euro GDP and Dollar Yen, uh, which are pairs I don't usually trade, to let me know which uh, from the Yen pairs or the Dollar pairs I should choose, or if I should choose, let's say, Euro Dollar or GU. I look at Euro GDP and I see uh, depending on the direction where I want to trade, I'm um, evaluating if the euro is likely to go higher. Sometimes I'm, I'm simply wrong because, well, the setup that I see on euro GDP might not be correct. But that's not such a big problem. I mean, in the end, I'm not trading that pair. I'm trading with the euro dollar. And <clears throat> the setup which should still work. Uh, even if GU is going uh, better than uh, EU, if the setup is okay and I, I could still make a few pips, uh, even if the euro is um, is not behaving as expected. All right, then um, once you know, once you have a setup, you're already watching the five minutes because the five minutes gives you the, let's say, the precise moment when uh, you have the best risk reward. And uh, usually it's at the end of a five minute candle. If you can get an entry at the end of a 15 minute candle, that's also good because you see the close of the candle um, going in your favor. That's the moment when you enter. But while you're doing that, you just look for elements that could interfere with your trading plan. Let's say if you're trying to enter exactly when the market is retracing up to 78%, that's one one level I don't like going again. Even if the market has been moving towards that level and I'm entering in that direction, there's still a very good chance of having a pullback from that 78. And since my stop is usually 25, 30, 35 pips, rarely above 40, I have a good chance of going in negative 20 pips or even getting my stop hit. And well, all this work uh, to get, um, oh, Thank you for that, Nora. I'll uh, try seeing what, what the problem is. Uh, in any case, um, I tested right before the session. I was hoping it's okay, but let me see if I can access it. Uh, Nora, I think I can see the page. Uh, I'm trying to check um, on my second second computer. Seems to take a long time to load though. All right. Uh, in any case, thanks for letting me know. I'll, I'll try to see uh, if there's a problem. If there's a problem for anyone else, uh, let me know, please. I'll um, try to uh, upload it again. Uh, Nora, uh, just in case everything else fails, uh, email me, please, and I'll uh, I'll send it to you. This uh, template is not. Um, I think it's quite easy to find uh, also.
All right. Anyone else having trouble uh, downloading or anyone else um, already uh, downloaded the template from there? Apparently not. Oh, it's working. Okay. Thank you, Jed. Uh, maybe no right. Maybe you can try again. All right. So you look for this 78 pip. This is one, um, one element I really like to check before entering. And, um, I go to, uh, even on the larger time frame, 78 pip on any time frame where I see support or resistance at that level, I find that relevant. Hmm, that's strange. Again, Vicky is saying it cannot be loaded. She just said it's working. I think I'll have to um, devise some other way to um, give you guys access to it. Okay, and um, bad timing. Sure, Nicholas. Um, this webinar actually is a one hour and a half webinar, so we have uh, plenty of time. Um, this is just a presentation before we go on the actual um, chart. And uh, I'd, I'd like to make it interactive and um, just um, try to look back on charts and, and find setups. And maybe then you guys can say, okay, I would take the trade here. Um, I would get out here. I would have this stop. I would have this target. What is the template for slow? Well, it's for trading. <laughs> it's for, um, basically for analysis or for, um, spotting your entry. Uh, you didn't miss much slow, so, um, just, um, wait until we get to the real, uh, example. And I think, uh, it's gonna be pretty much, uh, self-explanatory. Alright. Now I just want to clarify this thing here. Bad timing. What does that mean? Well, I'm actually um, in the process of developing this uh, these observations into a coherent uh, set of, let's say, rules. Um, it's more or less guidelines than rules. I mean, it's, it's more of a set of guidelines. Not to enter at certain um, certain moments in time. It's uh, usually those uh, very tricky moments at the beginning of each uh, trading session. Steps before pulling the trigger. Yes, that's right, uh, VC2. Sure, sure, Boyki. Uh, I'll have, um, we'll have a break of, um, 30 minutes. In any case, you will, um, have my email and you can, um, just send me an email. I'll uh, gladly email the template to you. Or you can simply Google it, um, if, uh, you don't want to wait until then. Um, it's just uh, available. It, it, there's no secret. In any case, it's just uh, just a template with moving averages. All right. And finally, you check your risk to reward. This is a a real um, uh, pain sometimes because you have a trade and you've been waiting for three hours or five hours to get uh, into a trade, and you finally get one. You have a trigger, and you look at the stop and you just say, well, it's just too much. It's too much of a risk, and uh, you see a, a resistance or support point coming very close uh, there, and you say, no, it's, it's just not not worth it. I'm not going to risk 50 pips for a perspective of 25 pips. Now, this this um, aspect here is very important because this um, risk to reward will determine in the long run whether this will work for you, this uh, approach or not. If you keep uh, entering trades with risk reward of um, not in your favor, even with a um, slightly favorable um, rate of um, success for your trades, let's say your, your trades end up in profit more than 50%, well, you will have to make much more than 50% profitable trades to uh, be in profit overall. So what I noticed, what I'm actually... Um, Counting on is a, a bit more than 50 50, let's say 55% or 60% uh, percentage of um, trades on the rules that I'm going to present you working. So you need uh, a risk to reward of at least one to one. Uh, you need a profit as big as your stop. And if you don't take that profit, you decide to, to close the trade earlier, 
you have to have reasons. You have to have good reasons as far as you are concerned, of course, why you decide to get out of trade. Just being afraid of the market is not is not a um, good enough reason. Uh, we'll see that in a moment. When we talk about live uh, setups, about actual setups, I think it's easier to to uh, define that because it always depends from one case to the other. And finally, uh, you use the five minutes uh, to time the entry and uh, to set your stop loss. Well, your stop loss uh, has a lot to do with the template, with, with the rainbow and the position of the moving averages at that time. Uh, not necessarily only on five minutes. It's always a combination of five and 15 minutes. What I'm going to do uh, with you guys is going to be a strictly 15 minutes uh, exercise. Because I can't uh, look back and uh, check at the same time the five minutes is just too uh, too tedious. But I noticed that in real market uh, conditions, it's good to look at the five minutes because sometimes you're waiting for, well, for just five tips, let's say, of a confirmation on, on 15 minute chart. And the five minutes is giving you the trigger, it's giving you the setup. So you decide not to wait for 15 minutes to confirm but go on the 5 minutes because everything is looking fine and your stop will be tight. So if then the, five, the 15 minutes confirms in 2 or 3 minutes, then you're on your way. If it doesn't, your loss will be uh, smaller. In any case, you're just juggling with which setup is giving you the, the more reliable and the more the, the, the better in terms of risk to reward uh, uh, trade and entry. All right. Now a few examples. I just um, cut these from uh, my um, my uh, platform uh, this morning. It is. It is Boiki. <laughs> that's that's a legitimate uh, question. It is. That's why 15 minutes should be your base. But sometimes 15 minutes is a little bit too slow when you already want to go in and it's like you have 10 minutes until the candle closes and the five minutes is really pumping so um, you have a five minute close above your level of support resistance you see a breakout you like the timing so you decide to go in but if you look here actually the setups are on the 15 minutes on my um Second screen, I have the 15 minute chart. The five minutes, I only bring them up on the computer where I actually take the trade. And after seeing that the 15 minute is already saying something and I'm ready to go in. Many times I would just uh, simply uh, take the 15 minute um, entry without looking at the five. All right. So this is one, uh, let's say, classic. Uh, Entry, uh, I call it the alignment. The alignment of the moving averages in the order from the slower to the, uh, sorry, from the slowest to the uh, fastest. All right. This is the actual rainbow. White is the 200 moving average. And then going down to approximately, I think, 70 around here, 60 something. Then you have the green. Then you have yellow and red so all these um, will have to be aligned okay from slowest to the fastest and the most important thing the fastest moving averages and it's actually a body of moving averages the red the reds are visible here and so is the yellow, even though not so clearly at this time. All right. But the red will have to come out from the rainbow. You can see here when there is some consolidation, you see the red going in the rainbow. Well, this is not where you want to be. Because right here, you don't really know for how long this consolidation is going to take place. All right. It just stays here. And here, you, you don't even see the candle. If you don't see the candle, then obviously you are in some sort of uh, consolidation or retracement. You don't want to go in here because you never know. Maybe it's going up to the 200. Maybe it breaks for a new rainbow to the upside. All right. But here, for instance, here on this candle, 
the reds are starting to push down well this is probably the two uh, moving average so obviously uh, when the second candle uh, goes about 10 pips below the the body the cluster of moving averages the red will descend very quickly but the yellow did not have time to go down not yet besides if you notice the color of my platform here is black that's right in between new york and asian open well this is what i call bad bad timing because right here you see i would be looking for this trend to extend to the downside but i'm at a moment when the market might start okay to to go down or consolidate some more when are we mo uh, most likely to see acceleration real move well i think that's after asian open so i would i wouldn't take a trade here simply because of that time but the setup itself well even if the yellow is not really um out you check the five minutes if the five minutes is in your favor then you can take the trade because actually the stop is still reasonable the red line is my stop at the time where the setup is um, triggered right here at the close of this candle the 200 ma will be your stop that means price will have to go through all the moving averages okay to touch your stop so you have this cluster of moving uh, averages protecting your stop all right this is your entry the horizontal um, white line and you don't really know where this is going you just see that there is there is here um, a setup there is a stop not too far away 29 pips and you can actually take 30 pips i cannot show you in this particular case what the market looks like on the bigger picture this is something you have to figure out for yourself when you take a trade this is why you have to, to test this uh, for yourself on, on a demo and see if if you are actually in um, in sync with the uh, with the uh, rainbow okay in this case here the market did go down to the target all right so i did not have any sort of uh, considerations um, of well let's say of any other uh, sort um, except for the formation on the rainbow so that's the alignment the market has been in a consolidation the reds are popping out you can see the candle clearly you can see the close of the candle outside these moving averages and the yellow is starting to be visible as well so you can see all the colors okay red yellow green blue violet and white all right now this will be the first example another one of the same uh, same thing now this is more interesting than the first you can see that the market has been in a in an ugly consolidation here you have no uh, idea what colors are visible here this is really where you don't want to be in and at this time here you see one candle closing above the cluster of moving averages meaning that the bulls are trying to take control now here of course you're, you wouldn't enter here you, you don't, simply don't have a um, signal to go in you might think of entering here but you look the yellow is still way way lower not to mention look at the the appearance of these moving averages there's no alignment there's no correct order of the moving average of, of the colors it's just market getting out of this uh, mess okay so you wait you wait and you wait the yellow moving averages are starting to go up all right and in the end they come out here exactly where you have the top so basically at this very point on the highest uh, candle you have according to the rules i just mentioned the signal to go along right this is why i chose this example because it's a bit confusing and it uh, gives me the chance to make a point now what i want is what i want is something like this okay i want an alignment uh, a real alignment i want a real trend 
just like we saw in the first example. Now, if I have something like this, this is more or less of an, of an anomaly. Um, you can consider it a signal right here at the top, but then again, you look that the close is somewhere at 2630, and your stop will be beyond the green moving average, not even the white. So the moving averages did not have time to go and leave the white behind as the last frontier. The 200 MA is not currently the lowest. That means whatever we have here, whatever move this is, it hasn't been going on for too long and it hasn't been reconfirmed. It was just confirmed the burst out but not reconfirmed. So if you just wait until the white stays at the bottom or at least until you have a reconfirmation, you will not be in the trade right at the very top. Also, the risk to reward, well, every time I see an entry pretty far from the cluster of moving averages and from where I would have normally the stop, the stop would be, in my case, here around the 85, maybe 90, 25, 90. The entry would be at least 30, so that's 40 pips of risk. Well, Am I really that confident that this is the right moment to risk 40 pips when the market has just come out of this consolidation? That's the question. Now, if you allow it to go down and you simply watch the market go down, you don't do anything, you just wait. All right? You wait because the moving averages will give you the, the answer in the end. Remember all the, well, almost all the moving averages from uh, 1 to 200 are figured here. and you can see uh, the tendency pretty well. I think there's no other um, okay, trend following this. Well, at least as far as I'm concerned, um, the rainbow is the best indicator of the trend at that specific time. You don't know what will, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, predict what the market will do next, but it sure tells you what's going on at the moment when you're looking at the chart. You can't say it's going down when actually the alignment is to the upside. All right. Now, here, I find this to be an entry right here. Okay. For one reason, we have the alignment. Finally, we have the, the red and the yellow. Okay. Coming out of the cluster. And even though these colors here are not in their right order, you have a much better risk to reward for this trade. You have an entry at 21. After the market has retraced and failed at the 200, okay, market again is coming out of this area of consolidation and closing clearly above the area of the rainbow. Your stop is 91. Your, your entry is 21. That's 30 pips. It does matter. If it's 30 or 40 pips of risk, you will see it matters. You are looking for 30 pips of target initially. You're looking for a higher high. It could go higher than that, of course. Now it's up to you to follow up with your trend and try to stay in as much as possible, of course, but also trying to take advantage of the pips that you make. 20 pips are possibly a level to take a bit off your position. And for me, 30 pips is definitely a level to put stop at break even. You will, um, we will discuss about this in a moment. But here, I just want to point out, well, it's not a perfect alignment, but if you look at the market exactly when it comes out of a troubled area, try to wait to get another entry. Well, the market will eventually go into a full scale rainbow and a perfectly uh, shaped rainbow with all the colors in their, in their respective orders. There's three notes no need to rush in at the first burst through. Okay? Well, you can, of course, argue you could go in right here when you have the first close above the rainbow. Well, I haven't studied this sort of entry. Okay? Of course, uh, from here all the way up here, there's some uh, 30 bits to be taken, and the risk is uh, pretty low if you put your stock right below the cluster. But this is something I haven't tried myself. I haven't traded myself, so I cannot say. Alright, besides, uh, it's easy to talk about a setup which you see, 
you you know where the market is going from here. So now it's easy to, to look back and say, okay, I should have uh, gone long. Well, of course, but at this time, it wasn't that clear. All right. All right. About these um, alignment entries. Anything I can go back on? Now, uh, I, I want to say also that there's uh, any number of ways to use this uh, template. Um, on the website where I found it, I think the rules were pretty much different. And I think it's, it's normal for each trader to, to adapt this according to, to their um, needs and to their understanding. For me, it's just a way of uh, creating order when the market is... Um, in this order, at least for me, so I know more or less when I see, for instance, for like here, when I see a uh, clear rainbow aligned to the downside, I know this is not the time to go long. All right, because I know I'm going against the trend. If I go against the trend, I'll have to have a good reason for it. All right, it's just a way of putting your your uh, trading in order. If you have trouble uh, navigating uh, it, it through your chart, all right, and, and of course it can be an analysis tool, it can be uh, an entry uh, trigger tool. Now, what's happening here? This is what I call an, an aggressive entry. <coughs> Sorry, I couldn't take um, more from this picture. I mean, from from, um, from the chart at the time when this was happening. The market was in a pretty strong downtrend here. So you see um, here there's an alignment, there's a nice full rainbow, which later develops, you can see uh, clearly all the colors and it uh, goes, uh, it opens up, which is a sign of um, higher volatility. Definitely the trend is down. You don't really expect the market to go from such a rainbow into a full rainbow to the upside immediately in the one single move without retracement. That's because, well, the market is biased short at this time. It might be going up, of course, anything is possible, but usually it doesn't go on a 15 minutes chart straight up into a full rainbow, a bullish rainbow without any retracement at all. Now what I see at this time is the market going down into a consolidation, and this is where your shorts on the rainbow would be taken out. This is where you would close your position. Actually, uh, the yellow central moving average is being broken, so you're you're out. In any case, that red uh, uh, mingling with the with the yellow like this is not a good sign for your short. So you just uh, go out. But from here, you don't really have a long signal. So you're just waiting. All right. So you wait, the market is going up, continues to go up, and you actually see the candles through this um, thin layer of moving averages. They are not all clustered together. So this is an important thing. You can actually see the price action. All right. And there is a wide rainbow going all the way from 200 to the fastest moving average. Now it goes all the way to 200 and it gets a bounce there exactly at the 200 and closes below. Again, it does the same here, and again on a third candle. This is already 45 minutes, and at the end of the fourth candle, which means one hour, the market, the bulls have been struggling here. All right, and they failed. I think I have some uh, connection problems with my uh, platform. Can I get a confirmation, please, for uh, sound and charts? Everything okay? Just every now and then checking uh, to see if uh, I don't get disconnected or something like that. All right. There is also this big, uh, thick, pink moving average. You can uh, see it quite uh, easily. It's um, thicker than the 200 MA. This is actually the 200 MA. No, I didn't say that, Jed. Uh, I, I didn't reach uh, that point. It's actually this candle here where you see that dotted vertical white line. This is your entry for the aggressive. Uh, but I'll, I'll explain in a moment. 
Now you have the 200 MA on 15 minutes. And I just came up, came up with this idea to see the 200 MA on the next higher time frame just for reference. Okay. And this is the, the 400 moving average, which is the same curve as the 200 MA on 30 minutes chart. All right. I use the same principle for five minutes. So you will see on my five minute chart a 600 moving average thick, um, pink line. All right. Which is actually showing on the five minutes where the 200 MA on 15 minutes is at that time. So that tells you that there might be a rainbow somewhere on the 30 minutes chart as well, which ends right here at this line. The 200 MA is the, the end of the rainbow because usually, well, traders don't uh, look for moving averages beyond the 200. It's considered to be, well, some traders use it as a trend indicator. Some uh, traders use it as support resistance. Well, uh, there are lots of, uh, of ways um, in which uh, the 200 MA is used uh, uh, by traders everywhere. But bottom line is, you have two two moving averages, two 200 MAs. This is on 15 minute chart, the chart we're looking at. This is on a higher time frame. And you notice that you get rejection here once, twice, three times. Now here you would ask, okay, why do we get in here at this point? The answer is risk to reward. This aggressive entry has to, to give you a risk to reward of at least 1.5. Because your entry is against the move done by the market in the last hours. So practically it's been moving up from the second half of uh, London Open all the way into New York uh, session. All right. And now you want to go down. You want to short from here. First reason. Why are we shorting? For, we did not reach the upper side of the rainbow. The retracement was done without any pullback at all. This is a pretty convincing display of a trend, which I'm not expecting to, to be broken immediately. Then you have the rejection at the key moving averages. And actually, you see, I'm not saying you should short here at this candle, but on the candle that gives you enough distance to really confirm that this was a rejection. All right. Now your stop will be, I just placed it here at the high of the spike. Of course, you can uh, have your stop even uh, more aggressive, even lower, because this has to be a rejection. I am not saying this is a sure proof entry. I'm saying that the risk reward is good enough for you to, to, uh, want to try. All right. You have a trend in your favor. You have a good rejection at a key level. And also, here in this particular case, I like the, this example. The timing is right. Now, why do I consider this candle here to be a good moment and this candle here not such a good moment? Well, because this corresponds to New York Open. Now, I've been burnt before trading exactly at New York Open and getting the perfect signal, the perfect entry, only to get my stop hit and then the market confirming uh, my trade. I don't like being in that situation. I'd rather be late. Simply allow the market to do whatever it wants at the beginning. Well, usually I like entering um, in the direction settled after the first, usually 30 minutes, uh, one hour after the um, New York Open, when the market already has a direction and it's not shaking up and down anymore. But here there was nothing to take because there was no signal. You couldn't just go long uh, against the 200 moving average on 30 minutes, on 15 minutes. You're just, you, you notice the end of the line here. It might not be the end of the line, but at this point you don't know. You, you don't want to enter long against this move, against this these levels. So if you just keep waiting and you observe the bounce, your entry will be not at the very top, but on this candle, one, two, three, four, one. Stop around, let's say, 71, 75, about 30 tips. 
that you are high enough to witness even a possible full rainbow developing so you can take this down for much more than 30 days. The, the whole point is to use this in your favor and uh, when you enter such a trade and you risk 25 pips and you know that the chances of this working are lower than in the normal um, alignment setup, you want to take as much profit as possible because basically it's a sort of picking top. You're not entering with the move. You see the move for the last, I think, five or six hours was definitely bullish. So you, you're going against that. All right. You want to go for the full, come back and take uh, 50, maybe even the double of the risk. All right. Yes, Jen. Uh, it is being recorded. All right. Now, a few words about the stops and targets. I think we'll have about um, half an hour to look at uh, real examples. I just wanted to make these uh, <coughs> things clear before we look at the template and uh, look for um, setup, and then we'll come back uh, to the procedure okay to take the list and um, see um, how the theory is um, put into practice counter trend uh, what do you mean Rob yes this is actually counter trend but well there's there's something to say here your counter trend regarding this move I don't really consider it counter trend until the 200 MA has been breached and I'm trading on the other side of the rainbow. Now, if, if I short beyond 13360, I would consider that to be counter trend. I, I'd rather say that this entry here is a, a re-entry, okay, on the bearish trend, which was valid for quite some time. I mean, the Asian session was very strongly bearish and so was half of London session. And again, I'm insisting on how clearly and nicely shaped the rainbow is here. You can see all the moving averages from the fastest to the slowest. All right. So that's not usually happening in just a few moments. It takes some time. And well, you can notice also where the 200 MA on 30 minutes is. So clearly we're trading below that level as well. I wouldn't really call that counter trend. It's just how should I put this? It's not with price action at the moment when you enter, but I'm insisting on not entering, not trying to pick the top and selling at the 200 MA. You have to actually wait for this sort of setup to see that the 200 MA is actually capping. So you wait once, you, you wait the second candle, the third candle, and the fourth candle. You still get a good deal. I mean, an entry at 13341 would stop at 65 or 71. It's still 30 pips. Um, this is GJ, right? So 30 pips is not that much. Um, you can get 60 pips in no time. And actually, 13290 was hit uh, here in this example. And market went down way more than that. I think Vicky will uh, be able to answer that. But I, I think so, yes, uh, Vicky too. Also, guys, if you want a copy of um, of this uh, presentation, just send me an email, please, and I'll I'll be happy to uh, send you one. All right. Now, a few words about stops and targets. The stop is really um, determined by the rainbow. Uh, I know the stop for sure. When I look at a setup, the stop is what I first focus on. Uh, it's more important than the target because you're actually looking for the market to continue what it's been doing. You want it to continue the trend. So you're more concerned what's your risk, what's the, what's the opportunity cost at that moment for you to join the trend, right? And then, well, of course you're interested to, to know that at least you can uh, get as much as you risk, but the stop is important. All right. Usually for me, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm trading on one side of of the rainbow and I want my stop to be exactly on the other side. So I want the market to breach all the moving averages from the fastest all the way to the 200 for me to be stopped out. 
Of course, it's possible at any time, especially if you are uh, selling a bottom or you're buying a top, and that's always uh, a risk with this strategy because you are always with the trend. So um, there's no way you would be entering. Um, let's say you, you would be entering uh, short when the market is clearly moving long and has been doing that for quite some time on a strong trend. I wouldn't call this uh, previous example an exception. I would still enter below the 200 MA. And that's a pretty easy rule. If you are beyond the 200 MA on 15 minutes, there's really no point in trying to continue to uh, believe in that move. It's not happening. So you just wait until uh, the rainbow is giving you another um, opportunity. And that's going to take some time because, well, after the 200 MA is breached, you will have a setup something like this. You see, my second example, and you will have, first of all, um, a push through, but that's not usually the move, all right? It's not, the, it's just the first attempt, and uh, there will still be some opposition from the, um, from um, the other, well, the, the counter, uh, counter trend traders at that point. So you will see that the retracing. If after the retracing everything is full and the direction is resumed, then you can uh, you can look for an entry. But as a rule of thumb, guys, if I'm looking here, let me go to the first example. If I am looking for a short right here, the market is going up. If it bounces off the 200 and comes back, I will still look for short. If on the other hand the market closes clearly above the 200 and I see some red moving averages here, some even some yellow, I can simply put this pair aside because I will not be trading it for the next one or two hours. It's not where I want to trade, not at the first breach of the 200 MA. If you want the trend, you want it to be developed, you want it to be uh, as much as possible mature and it's not going to happen right after the first attempt of the 200 MA. I mean, just think of this as a wall, okay, with layers, and the market breaches one, two, three, well, all the way up to 200. Isn't it normal for the fourth breaking through these moving averages to want to take a break? I think it's just um, obvious. All right, now back to the stop. So it's simply um, placed beyond the 200 MA, and that should be also beyond all the MAs at the time. All right, and sometimes it happens uh the rainbow is very, very wide, and you still want to go in because of very good timing and um you you want to go in with a tight stop. The trend is very, very strongly in your favor, and the two hundred m a is far away, so you have a stop based on the rules of the two hundred moving average, maybe beyond eighty fifty so what do you do uh Sometimes I use the, uh, oh, this should be thick yellow, the thick yellow moving average um, or the green. Let me show you this one. All right, or the green, depending on the situation. Or I try to take the trade on the five minute chart uh, instead, which will be, of course, faster. And, um, well, if even the five minutes shows a very large distance between the entry and the um, top of the rainbow or bottom of the rainbow, then maybe it's time to simply wait for a pullback. Sometimes it's painful to, to wait for it and the market keeps going and going. Uh, well, it's just the way it is. All right. Uh, regarding the target, well, uh, Boyke, I'll uh, show you in a moment. Uh, after this, we're going uh, on the template and uh, they are all uh, linear weighted actually. But this is just the way the, the template was. I'm sure you can uh, adjust all of them to be simple or exponential according to your preference. What I did myself to um, what I adjusted in this uh, template, I simply created the median line for the yellow, for the green, and for the blue, because I needed some reference um, where these colors are, you know. So um, sometimes I use it as a barrier. For instance, this, you see, 
when it reaches a yellow moving average, it's gone. It's just going up from that moment and keeps going. All right, the target is um, pretty much uh, at uh, your discretion. Now, usually I just put uh, in as a target the same um, number of pips as I have for a stop. Okay. Sometimes I um, I just push the target um, beyond that because I see a good potential and because the market has confirmed very strongly my entry immediately after I go in. And what I try to do is maybe take some off at some uh, point when it's convenient and then uh, uh, allow half of that position to, to develop. Sometimes you get uh, trades with 25 pips of risk and you get 100 pips uh, of profit in one single session. So it, it can get uh, really nice. Especially when the market is trending. Now, it hasn't been doing that too much lately. But when you have a trending market and you use this uh, entry, you can just let it roll and uh, just simply adjust your stop lower and lower and lower lock in profit. And that's it. It's, uh, when, uh, when it's over, you will know. But in any case, the, the first target shouldn't be less than the stop. That you have to th keep in mind that the probability for this um, approach, as far as I could test uh, until now, is uh, not so high. It's not 80%. Okay, maybe maybe 60%. <laughs> Nora, <laughs> yeah. Well, for me. <laughs> When I looked uh, for, when I found this template uh, by accident, I was just browsing around. I had several moving average uh, settings. Uh, I, I used um, two moving averages crossover with a third as a filter and tried a lot of, of settings, a lot of things. I just want to see what is, what's going on, you know. And in a moment you will, uh, you will know what I mean. Sometimes, Nora, when I was using those, um, Moving averages crossover setup. I noticed that I have two or three losses in a row after having a very, very nice streak of, of wins, big wins. I have three or four, maybe even five losses in a row, small losses, but still five in a row. And then I look back at the chart and I say, why did I keep going into these trades? Obviously the market is, uh, consolidated. Well, it, it wasn't that obvious because if it, <laughs> If it had been obvious, I wouldn't have got into the trades to begin with. So the rainbow with all these moving averages will tell you when the market is consolidating. You will know because they will look contracted. They will look, um, that the band created by the, by the rainbow is going to be narrower and you cannot see the colors too well. And the price is somewhere behind the MA. That's not a good sign. That's not really, for me at least, uh, on the system, it's not the, the best moment to go in. You have to allow the price to get outside the MA. And the MA should be chasing the price, not vice versa. I think, uh, Nora, to answer your question, it, it just depends on the trader. If, uh, if you want to take the rainbow and remove some of the moving averages, why not? It's just, a template with moving averages. It's not, uh, you're not offending anyone. Uh, I, I took the liberty of adapting it to my own needs. I added the higher time frame 200 MA and I, um, made some of these uh, MA thicker. Well, I just adapted it to, to how I see things and how I use it. I'm sure there are many other ways to, to go around it. All right. Quickly towards uh, some uh, money management principles. This is the last uh, slide before we go on the template itself. So, uh, as I was saying, the probability of success, I'm saying above 50%. Well, it's actually a bit more than 50%. I would say three out of five uh, setups work. Okay. But you still need at least one to one risk to reward. Okay. Uh, you can get out of a trade sooner, but you have to have reason. We'll talk about this in a moment. All right. Support resistance levels and the time factor can get can help you get better risk reward. 
Now the time factor is something very simple uh, that I'm actually trying to use more and more because it's uh, it tends to be very uh, objective. It sounds funny uh, because actually the time factor in uh, if you look back at the chart, um, the, the sessions never look exactly the same. But I noticed that, for instance, there are yes. Uh, what is red moving average? Hardly, um, I think it goes from 2MA to uh, 10 moving average, but I'll have to check. I, I don't really look at any individual moving average. When I put up the chart, I will answer your question uh, immediately. All right, uh, the time factor I was saying, those moments right at the beginning of London session and US session are tricky and I like to avoid them. I like entering these um, setups at times when the market is not likely to uh, spike up or down because of some fundamental. And also I like to take profit somewhere towards the end of the session and you will notice that my charts have some colors, some sectors where I like to trade and I don't really like trading in between those sectors. I know that the market is either well uh, in take profit mode or uh, just set, setting up for a possible new direction. I, I don't want to be in between and uh, see that uh, I enter with the, with the trend and the 15 minute trend uh, is reversed immediately. All right, these trades are supposed to work pretty quickly. If uh, you see the market going against you and it keeps going, it keeps going. Adding to losing positions is not a good idea. All right, so um, don't add to to losses. All right, but you could add to wins if you know what you're doing, and especially if uh, the first positions are nicely uh, protected. When the market is trending strongly, you can add to to wins for sure. So. You can do that and you can scale out of the position, but I don't recommend scaling in because you're not uh, trying to reach the, to, to take the absolute stop or the absolute bottom. Your point is to be, to enter the market when the market has already confirmed that it's going with the trend. So you just want to go with the flow. All right. You, you don't want to be the first one in. And then um, adjust stop tighter as you go in profit. Even if you have 15 pips, sometimes I like tightening my stop to minus 10 or minus 5. Okay, you don't want to to have 15 pips and then having a stop of minus 25 or minus 30 pips. It's just it doesn't uh, it doesn't go well with the overall uh, system. You know, the in general, if uh, if you're looking at each setup and um, what you get after each entry, um, you will notice that you get a few bits, I think 80% of the entry. So if you manage to take maybe 20% off at a level which seems convenient for you, 15 pips, 20 pips, whatever seems convenient, and then follow with the other position, you will, uh, by taking some off and reducing the overall uh, risk, you will be balancing your position in such a way that the losses will be small. That's actually the, the the objective to keep the losses really small, because there will be losses probably as many as let's say 50-50, right? But you do want the risk reward to be in your favor as well. Just assuming that the probability of success is 50-50, which I don't think is true. I think you have a higher probability than that. But I like um, considering 50-50 just to uh, to be on the safe side. All right, I think this is it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, anything, uh, any feedback, you're using the rainbow any other way or for any other reason, uh, there's um, my email right now on the screen. Please don't hesitate to contact me. All right, I'll um, type it also in the window. Okay. All right, now guys, let's go um, to the platform. All right, let's see what are we looking at right now. 
okay and let's go over the rainbow let's let's see a pair euro dollar all right and a very nice move today in euro dollar it seems like it's continuing okay i have some questions which i haven't seen on my other screen sorry for that guys you cannot download the template grant please use the Please use the uh, email I just uh, mentioned to and to, to, to let me know, and I'll uh, send it to you in the uh, in the break. Oh man, there are lots of uh, questions I haven't uh, answered here. How small are the moving averages in red, Harley? This is your uh, answer now. It starts from the two moving average down to the 15 moving average which is the last red okay so from 2 to 15 then you have the yellow from 17 to 41 and so on now this you see this this is the perfect alignment rainbow all right signaled uh, somewhere very early in the uh, london session today uh, i wish i could say i took this one but i was late i uh actually came way after this one moment why so many minutes jeff i am more of an elliotician of course i'm using elliot waves uh, a lot um, and this is actually just a particular side of my trading which i never presented um, in my uh, usual sessions here on fx3 because we usually analyze and that's still the base of my trading but i like this for my um, short term uh, entry uh, as a short term entry technique. Oh, 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 all right, have some problems here. Sorry. Okay, the email. Okay, I'll. All right, here it is again. Let me just go back. I missed some uh, of your questions, guys, and I'm sorry about that. As you can see, these moving averages are linear weighted. All of them linear weighted apply to close. You will uh, see this when you get the template. Again, I'm sorry that the download uh, link doesn't work. Comments one hour ago. Okay, blank screen. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> okay. Now I was showing you uh, this area here and saying that this is the perfect um, perfectly shaped uh, rainbow of course it's easy to say it now and this is not the right time according to this strategy to enter long of course it's uh, the confirmation is very strong but you have to be in at the beginning or not at all and even here you see when you enter after a pullback this for me would have been a dangerous point to go in right at this point here all right. Any questions before we go on real in real market conditions, and we pick some time somewhere at the beginning of the year, some time uh, no one remembers, and we'll try to identify some trades and see how we manage them. Anyone? Uh, can you guys come up with a month and a date, and we'll start from there. Sometime maybe in I don't know November, December, January, February. Not really very close to where we are now. VC2, uh, I'm not sure where exactly you, uh, you were when, um, the black screen came up. In any case, uh, whatever I, I did, um, whatever I said there will be, um, obvious when we look at the example. November, let's see. Jed is saying November. Adrian is saying seven one. No, um, I think all I said uh, VC to bottom was just showing you this setup here and telling you that the entry according to the rules that we discussed would be right here. Okay, timing wise is okay because it's already after one hour, uh, one hour inside London session, so it would be okay. We look for the risk to reward this is your entry
<laughs> Nam BK is asking me if my political science degree helped me in my career as a trader. Um, officially, yes, I'm supposed to answer yes, but no, not really. I think uh, that one side of uh, what I did, um, I just uh, switched to IT after that, I switched to trading after that. I, I don't mind uh, switching to something else uh, if uh, if I find something else more inspiring, no problem. But I guess, well, there are some habits of thinking or, um, well, considering things, uh, the view that you have on, on things that could be uh, influenced by uh, my education. I'm not sure it goes anywhere beyond that. All right, so the stop would be where? Right beyond the 200 moving average at this point. So it's right here, 25. By the way, guys, if the stop is beyond 50, forget it. Just uh, look for something else. It's probably, um, it's just too big. For me, 50 pips of risk on 15 minutes chart, just too much. And then um, the target is uh, obviously about the same. So something like this. 128, 128, 15. I did not take this trade uh, early morning, but if I had, I would have probably closed before 2820. I wouldn't have been in a trade now for sure. Well, Harley, uh, that, uh, sometimes that's true, you know, and, uh, I think more than that, um, you, you have to be inspired by what you are, what you are doing. And at that time, um, well, well, when you're 19, you're thinking uh, in a certain way, and when you're 25, if you, you think differently, maybe, and there are lots of changes in, in, in that time. So, well, things change. And I'm not ashamed to say that uh, if I do something and uh, I find something else more inspiring, I, I simply uh, quit and, and go to... It's not really a quitting, it's just I, I go ahead and do whatever inspires me most. And uh, if uh, this will happen to trading... Uh, sometime in the future, well, I cannot guarantee that. If you don't see me on FX Street for like one year, you will know. <laughs> I found something else more inspiring. All right. So this is one, actually one uh, possible entry, one possible trade right here. Pound dollar with the rainbow, current price action and trade trigger from yesterday. Sure, Nicholas, why not? Let's look at pound dollar and then I'll go back to euro and um, the um, those um, dates that you guys suggested. So you're we're talking yesterday, right? Talking yesterday, and I'm going to go um, on this uh, on this chart, uh, candle by candle. All right. I'm not sure um, if you get a, a refresh this quick. All right. I'm. I don't know if I can keep up. Um, if my second screen keeps up with what I'm doing here. Anyway, I'm on uh, GU, 15 minutes. Yesterday, 8.30, that's about, uh, that's around uh, 7.30 GMT. London Open. Okay, we had some uh, pullback from uh, Asian. And then we entered London Open with a nice big candle up. All right, this is it right here. Um, can I get a confirmation that you, you guys actually see what I'm pointing out? Because on my second screen, I still see the euro. Okay, good, good. Then it's my second screen now. Uh, All right, no problem. Now, would you go in immediately here? According to the rainbow, you have the yellow. You see the yellow. The red is right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I have to keep this, uh, guys, because... My second screen is too slow and I'm going to end up uh, answering your questions in uh, half an hour time. I assume you want your questions answered immediately. So I'll have to keep the, the, the chat screen there, chat window. All right. Now, my judgment of this, first of all, you look where your stop would be according to the rainbow and the stop would be right here. That's 151.30. There's no way I'm going at 152.20 with a stop at 151.20. So that's Clearly not a setup for me to take uh, on the 15 minutes chart. If the 5 minutes gives me something really, really low risk, maybe I would consider it. In this situation, no. Definitely not. Alright? 
uh, it's just too far away. The stop could be right below the previous low. All right. Now we're going a bit beyond the rules here. Okay, because you would assume that after this dip, the market broke the previous high and it's never coming back to this 151.90. Alright, fair enough. But there's another problem. The timing is not good as far as I'm concerned. This candle is coming only half an hour into London session and I've seen a lot of such candles reversed. Okay, besides, I don't really see this level of resistance here being clearly broken yet. So there are lots of reasons why we would be careful at this point and not just uh, go in along on the first candle that pushes through. Now let's see what's next. Okay, there is a bearish candle now and the yellow, well the red appears even better right now. And the deal is somewhat sweeter than before because you get a better entry. And you have the first close above the level of resistance at 52.30. Let's see. Price action is still not very convincing, honestly. And, well, yes, the trend is very, very strong to the upside. On the other hand, the risk to reward is a very big problem in this case. Because you see, guys, if you're not following the rules, if you're breaking the rules now and you put your stop at 51.80, you can just as well have a retracement touching 5180 and then going your way. If you're putting your stop here, then you're clearly outside the whole strategy. Because one, one loss this big would uh, weigh on, um, on your results maybe for a week. And besides, you're not that sure that uh, the market cannot reverse from here. You're, you're never that sure. Now keep in mind, I'm just looking at the 15 minute chart now. I haven't analyzed the market from, I mean, with the eyes of yesterday before London session, uh, at all, when all crossed, well, the actual entry on, on the rainbow was here. But again, you remember what I said, uh, um, regarding GJ earlier, I wouldn't have got in here. Uh, it would have, it would have been a, a good trade, I think, in the end if you have the right stop, but I wouldn't have entered here, no. It's just simply too far away, and this is the first breach of the 200, I would have waited for the pullback. Maybe, and I say maybe, here at the break of the previous high, and when it closed higher up, with stop below uh, this. But, again, hypothetically, it's easy to trade, you know. And, uh, yeah, we could have, should have, would have, but, it's not that easy actually. Um, I, I remember I had this sort of situation, I think it was last week, and I didn't uh, take the trade, and the trade would have gone just fine in my favor. And I had in mind the tight stop, everything would have gone in my favor, but I didn't take it because I was uncomfortable with the overall picture, and uh, well, the waves were not confirming either. For instance, here you have one, two, three, four, five. Do you see me going? <laughs> Long at the top of wave five, not, not really. Not, not likely. So, um, I think I would have missed everything actually here on this entry. And later on, you see, you have interesting entries for me right at this point here. Jack, if price, if price goes flat, you don't want to be in the market. That's my, um, my answer. That's definitely, uh, good news because I know that that's not the, the right market to, to trade. And that's one of the best things about the, um, the rainbow. Jez, uh, I was uh, thinking about this and I, I thought you guys might ask this question. So I looked on the chart, uh, four hour and daily and weekly. Well, you have a look at those. You download this template and have a look at the weekly, daily and four hour and you tell me, I think. Uh, basically, the formations, the, the alignments are way nicer because there's not so much noise as, as the uh, five minutes and 15 minutes chart. That's right. That's right. In this case, with this strategy, you cannot go against the trend. It's just impossible. If you are following all the rules, you cannot go against it. You might be late and you might be buying a top or selling a bottom. Yes, that's always a possibility. 
but you, you are still on a trend. And well, there's one thing, guys. Uh, here, for instance, you see, I like trading somewhere inside New York session, somewhere like here, or somewhere like here. You see this? This for me is a nice entry. You will ask why why choosing this entry and not something else? Well, basically, it's because Asian session gave a small correction and then gave gave me the realignment. Okay, and the stop. Well, in this case, obviously, you can't have the stop this uh, far away, but you can put it right beyond this yellow line. You're not going to get uh, a very safe trade, but the risk to reward is still very good, and you are still trading with the trend. Or you can simply wait for the uh, high to break. But I do take into account a lot of the session, the trading session. Okay, that's why, for instance, I wouldn't take a trade here, and I don't like taking a trade here. It's just too early, and I have no idea if this is going to be sustained or not. And now let's see. We're going still up. All right. It doesn't really seem like the momentum is building up. That's the, the, the problem that I see right here. And again, um, we have this problem of the stop. It is very, very far away. Boise, it's, uh, it's on the time frame that you're actually trading. It's the 15 minute chart. But of course, when you say trends, well, there are trends on every time frame. It's up to you if you want to, to use, for instance, um, the 30 minute chart. I have here the 200 MA, so I know that actually there is a rainbow at this moment here. There is a bullish uh, rainbow. Longer term, I would say daily four hour. Daily four hour are the reliable time frames for me. I, I don't like one hour chart. It, it seems to be um, small enough to give noise and uh, big enough to be slow. I, I just I just don't like it. I never managed to, to 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 get what it's trying to suggest. I'm always late or or too early. Uh, I prefer a 15 minutes chart for uh, immediate action, uh, five minutes, and then uh, directly four hour and daily. All right. Now we simply watch. Right here, I would prefer something um, when the moving averages start to go into each other and group together, okay? And then take a trade when it goes outside of that group, all right? Now, you see there's some reaction here. Now, here, according to the rules, if everything was, if the 200 MA was higher up, you could have taken a trade yet, even at the at this point here, the, the original entry point, or at the break of the high. Okay, it's still something, you know, from uh, 50 to 40 to 50 to uh, 90. Well, that's basically 50 pips. Definitely, you wouldn't have come out of this trade um, without um, at least a small profit. But personally, I think I would have missed this one. It's just uh, price action at the beginning of London, and well, it depends what's happening immediately before too, and uh, well, what's the price action, but in this case, I would have skipped it. All right, was this yesterday? I think it was yesterday, right? 14th of July? Hold on. Uh, no. Okay, let's let's just follow. Okay. All right, now the price is going into the moving averages. You cannot see price anymore. Okay, it keeps. Yes, Adrian. Right now, you see that that's what I I meant before that I cannot really go uh, now that we're doing this exercise. I cannot keep two charts at exactly the same time because it's not a live price action anyway. What I'm saying is, the setup itself is on a 15 minute chart, but I'm using the 5 minute chart to enter sometimes. Okay, here for instance, let's just try and see. I'll make it pink so it will be uh, visible. And we switch to the 5 minute chart. And now watch. You see, right here on the, on the 5 minute chart, 
it wouldn't be a good enough entry for me because the red is up but the yellow is not. So I would have waited until the yellow is up. So the entry could have been here with stop at 5190. You see, even though I said two minutes ago that on 15 minutes chart you couldn't have taken this trade, five minutes still gives you a possibility. Now, whether you take it or not, that's your business. Okay? But in uh, in fact, the five minutes gives you trade sometimes when the 15 minutes doesn't. The blue MA, uh, the thick blue is uh, the almost 100. It's uh, 98 moving average. They go from four, um, the, the, the step for the blue is four, 98, and then the next one is 102. It's the closest to the 100 MA. And this one, the green is closest, uh, closest to the 60, 65. And in between, of course, I, I try to, to, um, consider one exactly in between. Now, if you see here, see, this is your entry according to the rainbow on five minutes. But, uh, careful, Adrian, because five minutes can be noisy. And if the 15 minutes chart is not clearly with you at the time when you enter, it's better not to. And one thing I would advise strongly against, don't trade a five minute, um, setup clearly against the 15 minute one. Alright? When the 15 minutes is definitely on the other side, do not do it. Because it's, uh, the 15 minute chart tends to be, uh, to have more weight than the five minutes. Why not put stop on blue as leftist? Yes, you can put it on blue or you can put it on green. That's why I'm, I'm saying this is just one way of doing things. Um, by no means this is the, the only way to use the rainbow. Of course you can, Boiti, of course. It depends on the strength of the trend as well. My preference goes, instead of using a stop, a very large stop based on the 15 minute chart, if I'm very confident about what I'm trying to do, and the 15 minute chart, for instance, here, is closing above the previous high and I want to take the trade, that means the 15 minute chart is not against me. All right? Fine. Then I can trade the five minutes. I can use the five minutes at this point. When it gives the signal, which is around here, either this or this, let's say you take this, your stop is at the 200, that's 152. Your risk is, is 32 pips, your target around 32 pips. Clearly you're, you're taking your, uh, your profit even on the first jump very, very quickly. Okay. But this is just one example. All right. Let's go continue further with the 15 minute chart and see. Guys, um, of course, I have to, to warn you. Sure, sure, Vicky. Uh, I just want to finish at least this uh, example and then uh, maybe uh, have a look at another example just for those of, uh, for the members who will not be able to join us uh, for the second part of the webinar. I just want them to have at least uh, one or two examples on how to use this. Of course, you can um, email me, guys, and uh, probably will uh, look at such um, setups uh, in our regular sessions on Tuesday from now on, now that um, we are all here and um, you know uh, what I'm talking about. Well, just because uh, a 15 minutes chart is a short-term chart and it doesn't really, the market doesn't go 100 to 200 without giving me a correction on the 15 minutes chart. It rarely does. So, uh, yeah, you can go for more, of course. I actually try to push uh, at least uh, part of my position for more. But if I'm getting 1.5 of what I risk, I think it's pretty much okay. I'm uh, happy with that. Because that means the profit from two trades can cover three losses. Which is okay. It's okay. Uh, for me, it's okay. Again, uh, well, uh, up to you to, to uh, design your own rules. And I'm sure uh, there might be a lot of ways to tweak this uh, to, to make it uh, more profitable uh, overall. Broken lines around thick lines. I don't know what you mean, Boykin. Uh, broken lines? I don't see any broken lines. Maybe at the end of the temp uh, of my... Um, if, if you scroll towards the left of the platform, I just um, probably don't have enough... Um, Samples of moving averages of, of, of bars in my uh, chart. 
chart. That's probably why it uh, they they get they get cut. But in this chart, I don't see anything broken. All right, let's uh, go quickly over um, this session here. All right. So we hit a top. Market is pulling back, and now the 200 MA, you see, is not that far away from the market anymore. Okay, the New York session starts. From now on, if we have a direction, we could think about a trade. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. So, like the way they are... Uh, Group together that green here and uh, the yellow. I just, it seems to me like if we enter when you can see the yellow going up, we'll be already a bit far away. Let's see where, where the yellow starts to confirm. It's more or less here where you start to confirm, but you see guys, you are at the level of resistance here, sorry. So you will have to go against this level of resistance. So the choice is either you try to enter before that level is hit, or if not, wait for the level of resistance to be clearly broken. Well, in this case, it doesn't get broken. It's just that um, when the market goes a lot in the same direction, keeps going and going, and well, it's not safe usually, as I said, to go uh, in around 78 pips. Now, this is exactly what I meant. You see, this 78 pips is right here. So you would go, uh, if you go here, even you didn't really have a signal. If you go at 52, 62, uh, with, with what? A target of 20 pips, not even? Caesar, it, it's okay. It, it just, it depends. You have to look at each example in particular, I mean, separately. You know? If the 15 minute chart gives you something good enough, then you don't have to look at the 5 minutes. But for instance, earlier, we noticed that the 15 minute chart was too, well, just too large for the price action that we, we saw. So five minutes was actually better. It depends. You have to look at both at the same time. All right. Well, from here, it's all over. Um, you can uh, easily just uh, forget it because when you see moving averages looking like this, well, most likely, you won't have much uh, else going on during that session. Now this is some break in between uh, New York, the late New York session and Asian. All right, Asian session starts right now. Seems like we're going down a little bit. Okay, 200 MA is moving up, by the way, all this while. This is the perfect example of sit back and don't do anything. All right, now it starts to is coming out. Does the yellow come out as well? Sort of. Well, now you now you see the yellow. Now you see the yellow uh, MA coming out, but price is going down. You'll have to wait for the break of this high to go in. Okay. All right. Now this is an entry for me, guys. Let's see if this had would have worked out. I really don't know what happened next. This is an entry. Hold on. It's a uh, close on 15 minutes above the previous high. And the red and the yellow are out, but actually my stop would not be right here, all the way here. My stop would be, I think, as close as 45, this low, 50. Now, you see, I'm breaking my own rules now. Why would I keep the stop here? Because actually, you see, the cluster of MAs is right here. It's not a normal, uh, nice, well aligned rainbow anyway. So there's really no point for me to, to have the stop all the way to 50 to 30. Well, not here. I wouldn't say that Caesar is, you see, you, you don't even see the, the blue and there's no green. I mean, look at the green. There are no green moving averages. There's only one single line 
all of them are clogged in one place. So I'm, I would be willing to risk about 25, 26, definitely not more than 30 pips on this trade. I think I would go even higher at 52 with my phone. This is a sort of trade, if it works out fine, if not, I really don't want to be, uh, to, to just hang out to, to get the beating. Okay. The moment I go in, it is in consolidation. Exactly. That's, that's one of, one reason. And these moving averages here, you see, the blue and the green are telling me, wait, it's not really perfectly shaped yet. Well, Caesar, it's, quite clear we're looking for the upside because well the 200 MA is down and we have the red and the yellow above all the other signs uh, moving averages and we have the price above the red and we have price on 15 minutes closing above this previous resistance well it's not a very clear perfect one but still something you know it's a little bit forced this example is a bit forced but it's it's all I have right now so I will just um, going through the process of deciding well it's not uh, obviously the, the best trade you could take all right i have no idea still if it's going to give me a target of at least 25 pips that's um let's say um around 153. there is also the problem of the previous resistance which is very close we're talking not even 20 pips that's another problem so now, I'm just looking at GU and I have no other option. I, I cannot look at other charts, you know. But at this point, if, if I was looking at the market at this point, um, I would have had to be very desperate to take this trade and uh, very frustrated of not getting anything for the entire day to get into this. But I think I would have looked for another pair. Something else, something more convincing. Uh, not really. It looks like a, it looks like a late uptrend. The trend has been going on for sessions and hundreds of pips already. And the only concern is we might be late uh, for the party, you know, Peter. And, uh, well, you never know. You never know. Uh, it's easy to look back on, uh, chart. No, Peter, it doesn't. Uh, when you look back, it's easy to say, yes, we, we should have, uh, joined the trend here and there. But you see, when, when you're in looking at uh, it's candle by candle, not, it's not the same thing. Now let's see, let's continue. Here you go. It's going very close to my stop. I don't think it would have hit it. And now I think I'm getting stopped out. And I would say I would have deserved it. <laughs> now it's going up. So you see guys, I, my stop was slightly too tight. In this case. This doesn't, this does not mean you cannot go in when you get a reconfirmation around here, but my original trade would have been stopped for about 25 pips of loss. Alright, well, the move up after this, pretty nice. The break of the previous high, you see, uh, that's why I said it's, it's pretty tricky, uh, the, the spike here was right at the resistance, and we, uh, we were looking at towards the end of Asian session to see the market going through. Mm. Not really. See, sir, I, I think I prefer another pair because I, I never trade uh, CHFJPY. Uh, after the break, uh, we'll have a look at the uh, euro dollar, um, maybe some other more common, more uh, traded pair. All right. Any questions, guys? I think uh, we'll have to take a break for about 20 minutes. Be back. Um, for the second part of the webinar, we'll look at other examples and also have a look at how an analysis would look like. You know, sometimes, well, now, as I said before, we're, we're looking at the 15 minute chart detached from anything else that was happening in the market at that time. So I really don't know how the other charts look like and how, what my perception of the market would have been at that point. I'm just trying to find entries simply looking at the 15 minute chart and nothing else. You know, so well, it, it's um, it's an exercise. I I think uh, I've been doing this well before trading it live. I've done this exercise by myself uh, many times, and 
even mechanically, if you look at uh, things like that, you still get winning trades. And you still get over 50% um, probability um, of uh, win. All right. We'll see. We'll see after the break. We'll look at the euro dollar. We'll take some uh, hypothetical trades and see uh, what, what the result would be over a few days, maybe one week. But we'll have to stick to, to the rules and, uh, well, if there are trades like this one, you see, <laughs> just discard it. <laughs> I just wanted to find a trade, uh, since we were, uh, almost running out of time. Alright. We'll be starting in about 30 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, something like that. And, uh, if you have questions for me, I'll uh, stay in the room. Let me know, please. And for those of you who, uh, want the template or uh, the presentation, uh, just email me. I'll uh, give you guys my email again. Here you go. Just drop me an email and I'll uh, gladly send it to you. I'm sorry uh, that download link here didn't work out. All right. Thank you guys for attending. Um, let me know if uh, you have questions. Um, for any uh, feedback, uh, just use the email. I'll be happy to hear from you. And I'll see you guys about 20 minutes for uh, the second one. Thanks again.